continue with the appropriate techniques in conflict management, our focus now is on useful steps to be taken to manage conflict. Key and pertinent to this topic is that we don't procrastinate as it has an impact on negatively deepening the opportunity to resolve a conflict. So the issue is to take things head on or tackle them rather in a constructive manner and hence the techniques in conflict management. And so we're going to look at the managing of conflict of others. In particular, let's look at in the scope of meeting. Planning a meeting as a mediator in conflict resolution, say, between two parties. And so we've created a scenario here, the mediator and two parties. And so there needs to be a planning and a preparation and obviously a practice of what the process is and the standard operating procedure for the meeting to be effective as it's as, as it serves to its importance in helping resolve conflict. And so in the meeting, what we're looking for is the outcome of a conflict resolution that should be commensurate to the level of the inputs from both parties in terms of planning, preparation, and the practice of conflict resolution. In other words, at the end of the meeting, it was likely to be measured by this statement. That the planning, the preparation, and the practice of conflict resolution is commensurate to the performance or the result of the conflict process at hand. And managing conflicts of others, let each person state their case. So if you're the mediator, you've got to allow each person ample and equal opportunity to state their case. In stating the case, here we are managing a conflict between two parties, as we said. You need to be an active listener. Listening skills are probably the most difficult of soft skills to develop as an individual and in particular in an, a working environment. Here you're required to listen to both expression and the position of both parties. Here you probably need to show empathy, meaning that you are able to put yourself in each party's shoes. You're able to show compassion and care. One of the four leading leadership experts, John Maxwell, says, people don't care how much you know unless you show them how much you care. And so when you show care to both parties, you're creating an environment that's conducive for them to be able to come together and participate in the conflict process. Here you need to avoid interruptions from both parties. So set around boundaries, not necessarily hard and fast rules, but which allow a conducive environment for each and every party to be able to express themselves without interruption. Each party should enjoy the opportunity to communicate without interruption. In managing conflicts of others, make it clear that you want to resolve. Here it's about creating an environment for both parties to create an outcome of a conflict. 
help resolve, not solve. Both parties must solve their own conflict. And the purpose of mediation is to control and help the process. Hopefully, which brings out a resolution. And in the, in the way you do it, it's the manner must be objective. Where you're not providing answers for the parties involved, but you're initiating an environment and, in, and, and creating an enabling environment where they own the outcome. So the parties must initiate their own resolution. You're like a conduit that allows for this process. We need to maintain objectivity. And this requires discipline, meaning that there is no bias to one party over the other. And this should never be tolerated, that we show bias to one party over the other. It means that we've got to refrain from influencing parties with your own opinions and ideas for the resolution. It means that we've got to create equal attention to both parties, respective who is right or who is wrong. You are there to create a neutral expression and gain a non-biased position between the parties. Meaning we don't overreact when there is drama. But we maintain a balanced, assertive, non-partisan position in helping with the process. We need to show or become calm in the process of managing conflict between others. Meaning we need to show, exhibit composure. This will help parties in conflict remain also calm. We need to manage stress, possibility of anger, and the emotions of the parties involved. When necessary, if emotions are bordering on getting out of hand, we must be in a position to adjourn the meeting so as to manage emotions if necessary. Here we also need to be focused on the essence when it comes to the conflict resolution. Managing conflict of others requires that we get to the source of Tension. Each party, having presented the case, help them figure what is at stake. Lead rather than, or rather, probe rather than lead. Be in a position to decipher the difference between the core issues and the manifestation of the conflict. The core issues are really the root problems or the root causes of the conflict. Be specific and be patient. Slow the process of communication when people exhibit negative emotions so that you don't lose the focus on what is at hand. Working together is important when resolving the conflict of others. Here you look at the identification of the source of stress, strain, and conflict will always proceed 
finding a solution. When we bypass the stress and the strain, it's highly unlikely we're going to come to a resolution. Agree to the full nature of the problem. Get both parties to understand clearly what the full nature of the problem because they're usually expressed by the stress and the strain and the tension. As mediator, you may need creativity and perseverance at arriving at a position where both parties can work together. Make a plan when managing conflicts of others. So once you have re 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 kind of uh, resolved or kind of reached a resolution, set about a plan to implement the agreement. In other words, set boundaries and timelines to achieve the desired goals. It will help steer both parties in an effective and efficient manner of being able to enjoy the agreement or the resolution. Writing down usually helps with, the par with parties being reminded of their commitments to their respective resolutions or outcomes. It helps set parameters as key to the conflict resolution so that people don't operate up, uh, outside the parameters, creating the possibility of another conflict. If both parties agree to disagree, be able to be able to be able to create an amicable environment as they part in different directions. So parties may not reach a reconciled position within their respective conflict, meaning they may want to keep their positions rather than reach a reconciled or unified positions. It may be because of different beliefs. It may be because of different values. Well, whatever the difference are, they will hold to those convictions. And so it may necessitate a point where both parties need to agree to disagree. Understand that they can agree to disagree. Don't force people into corners to agree or, or get them to bend over backwards so that you know they can be taken advantage of. If they take this pathway of agreeing to disagree, it must be in a civil manner, respected and done amicably. Non-violent, non-partisan, and that will be the value proposition that concludes the process. Always end on a positive note when dealing with the, as a mediator for both parties. Whatever the conclusion of a conflict, encourage parties to remain positive. Diffuse any negative vibes between the parties involved where possible. Whilst conflict can be unpleasant, maintain a mature approach at all times. Acknowledge all parties involved of their role in the conflict and their contribution.